Welcome to Inspire. My name is Rich DeBose. I'm Director of Church Support Services slash Creative Ministries for the Pacific Union Conference. And I'm here with my co-host, Greg Evans. And we're here to celebrate the arts, to talk about creativity and how we can use it to help tell God's story. And we have two inspiring guests with us today. And I'm going to let Greg uh, introduce us to our first one. We do, Rich. We have two really incredible artists today. And uh, the first one that I'd like to introduce is Karen Artiaga. Uh, Karen, uh, we'd like you to tell us about, uh, we, you're a calligraphy artist. Yes. And I've seen your work, and it's quite incredible. I'm mean, really struck by the beauty of what you do. Would you tell us how you kind of got into what inspired you to be sure. this kind of an artist? <laughs> um, well, it's kind of a strange story. I mean, ever since I was little, I remember being very um, captivated by uh, script and beautiful uh, words and letters. And um, But really, my journey as a calligrapher and student of calligraphy mm -hmm. um, started about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Um, and my husband gave me a gift and uh, a calligraphy set. He just oh, thought it would yes. be a fun gift I see to give. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. So he just said, hey, and, and it was so special. I, I was completely, um, you know, I had n never held a pen or knew what a nib ink was, anything of that like that. But that started my journey and I just fell in love. The moment I dipped that pen into the ink and started writing, um, I, I knew I was hooked. <laughs> so I just started, um, and then I just tried to take in as much as I could, and uh -huh. I'm uh, like online, I, spe specifically on Instagram, I love to, to see and learn as much as I could. So um, that's been my journey for these last years, and, and it's funny how you start delving into an area of art and creativity, and that opens up so many other doors mm -hmm. sometimes. So for me, are then- you, Are you mostly self-taught then? Yes, yes. Okay. So I, I haven't gone to a, a specific, you know, a, a school for it. So I am self-taught. I have, um, I'll take as many resources as I find online to mm -hmm. kind of help along sure. my journey. And yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of how, how I've come to this point. <laughs> so why, don't, why don't you show us a couple of items here? That... Sure. Um, so this is this is a piece that I did. It's the, the Galatians 5, 22, 27. And um, I'm wanting to see here. There you go, kind of. Kind of have to fight. <laughs> yeah, we're fighting. Yeah. Um, so in the back, this is a more modern modern calligraphy. So there's diff different forms of calligraphy, and the one that's used here is a, a modern form of calligraphy. Um, and then this is a watercolored pair that um, I painted. And then uh, here, this oh, I'll do this one it. over okay. here. Also watercolor and modern calligraphy with a little bit of sans serif script. Um, does that work? Yes. Uh, this is my favorite verse uh, that we've lived by, my husband and I, since we started Read that our journey. So, so our it says, can... he makes everything beautiful in his time. And that's found in Ecclesiastes 3.11. Um, and that has been a promise that, that has kept us um, grounded in so many, so mm -hmm. many seasons of our life. So this is one and my sister is a nurse actually here in Loma Linda, and mm -hmm. this was a, a Christmas gift for her. Uh, it's a prayer, and this uh, piece was done with an iPad actually. So it's using an Apple Pencil and iPad. Um, I did this digital. It's uh, modern calligraphy still. Actually, yeah, this is a little more like copper plate calligraphy uh -huh. style, but um, this was a, a piece for her. And then lastly, the one, or actually second to last, um, my father growing up, he his favorite animal was an eagle. And later, as we grew up, I would always see eagles everywhere in his office. And mm -hmm. his favorite verse is found in Isaiah, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. And so this was a watercolor eagle. And then the um, in Spanish, that's the, the calligraphy. Mm -hmm verse that I have here. So what kind of response have, have you gotten? Well, I think at first my family was like calligraphy and art. They were, <laughs> they were you know, but they've been so supportive and, um, and I started it as a hobby and then little by little people just started like, hey, I would like this special 
verse that has been meaningful for me and I just want to see be able to see it every day so can you do this or um, you know just different different opportunities started coming up where I was able to share this mm -hmm. um, and lastly I don't know if, if it's okay if I can just go ahead and yeah. share that piece over there on the corner this was done for my husband um, who uh, also in a, in a season where he was like this is I need a, a reminder of this so um, uh, you know we I did a, a symbol drew this anchor and um, go ahead and read it for us yeah so this one is a verse found in Hebrews and it says we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul Jesus has gone as our forerunner on our behalf um, beautiful so yeah. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> what is your biggest challenge with uh, calligraphy? Oh, my. The biggest challenge, I think, would be practice, making time to practice. Like all skills, um, calligraphy is one of those things that you have to uh, work on muscle memory. And, and so making time as a mommy of two and uh, <laughs> I, I homeschool and my husband's a pastor. We're, we're so involved in church and we love just the ministry. So, you know, just making time to, to do that. Um, I think that's something every artist struggles with. <laughs> right. Artists of the media, whether it's musicians or yes. artists, uh, you know, and it's so hard to find that commitment of time. Yes. And it's challenging. Life gets in the way so many yes. times, and and uh, that's that's sometimes difficult to do. Yeah, it can be absolutely. Mm -hmm. But um, I found that even sometimes just taking like 15 minutes to to just sit down and have that quiet time. Um, interestingly for me, uh, that time in, in painting and writing and specifically just writing the Word of God, um, when you do calligraphy, you really have to slow down. It's not something that you can do mm. quickly, even though it looks like the letters are just flowing across the page. Right. Every stroke has to have very controlled and precise movement. Um, so you're forced to slow down. And uh, what I found it to be so helpful was as I was lettering, uh, these, uh, you know, scripture, it really helped to sort of sink that scripture into my heart. And it, it became a moment where I was just in communion with God. And, and I look forward to it, writing down, taking time to That's do, cool. to sit down. Is, it kind of becomes my time where I'm saying, like, thank you for, for this promise and right. really taking time to let the word of God. It's almost like a devotional experience. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You're creating this, this art, but at the same time, you're communing with God. Absolutely. And what a better way, right? Right. Because God is creator. Uh -huh. He's created us to create. To so, create. <laughs> and, and as we create, there's, there's this, um, this beautiful bond we experience mm -hmm. with the master creator, right? So, so yeah. if people see some of your artwork and they go, wow, that is really cool. I would love to have something like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> where, where do they yeah, well, do I would, produce stuff to sell? Yes, absolutely. I, I love to do commission pieces and um, and if they see anything that I've already made, I can, you know, gladly make them again. So the best way to get a hold of me right now would be to, um, you can visit my um, online blushingwaterstudio.com or uh, Instagram at blushingwater is my handle. And blushingwater was... Um, I know it might sound a little what's strange, the, what's the but I can tell you the significance was there. there is a poem by um, a 17th century English poet. And as he's describing that first miracle when Jesus comes and he turns the water into wine, he says, the conscious water saw its God and blushed. And that was a, the, oh, the word picture that cool. he paints to that miracle. So that has just stuck to me. And I wanted something that would point to a God who is still using simple things of, of, of that surround us to make the most beautiful miracles. And so that's, that's where that cool. name comes in. <laughs> I will say that we had Karen just a few weeks ago as one of our speakers at our yes. Inspire gathering in Berkeley. That's mm -hmm. an honor. And uh, we had four speakers in the afternoon, and they were kind of, a, we called them a TED Talk-like presentations. And she did a wonderful job. Oh, praise God. Thank you Thank so much you. for coming all for the way to honor. Oakland and, and doing that. <laughs> and our next gathering is going to be in her husband's church. Yes, we're uh, so excited. In yes. So that'll be cool. We'll look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. I'm fascinated by two things. One is that you've only been doing this 
three plus years. Uh, we've interviewed so many <laughs> artists that, as young children, just knew that mm. that their art, you know, what what you know, they were going to do, yeah. and the level that you have accomplished in that short period of time, oh. to me, is just really phenomenal. Oh, and and God, God has praise truly God. given you those talents. But as we all know, talents is only part of <laughs> the, the picture here. We've got to develop those yes. and work at that. And, yes. and, and and that's just amazing to me that you're this accomplished after Aww. really a short period of time. Yeah. And this is beautiful work. Thank and you. And secondly, that you're using technology <laughs> yeah. uh, to assist. You, you know, yes. I, and I, those are things that I know nothing about. So mm. it, it always fascinates me when I see an artist using not only their natural skill, mm -hmm. but also the technology of the day, which yes. is just enhances. Uh, Absolutely. Some t does it make it easier or? You know, I feel like it definitely does mm -hmm. facilitate a lot of aspects when it comes to uh, making compositions, like uh, specifically like that one there with the anchor, um, because I'm able to place and move and crop and versus kind of having right. to start from scratch sure. and, and put <laughs> yeah. it in. But um, you really, you need to, place, you exactly, to you have to start all over. <laughs> this, yeah. this lets me kind of copy, paste, and move stuff around, which is nice. <clears throat> um, but I, I do have to say that uh, nothing really replaces that pen and paper, mm -hmm. ink and pen, you right. know, just that muscle memory. So right. um, I make sure to have my time uh, just honing those skills first and then using them, using technology like an iPad or Apple Pencil to you know, to to help facilitate, but there's already foundation foundational skills that of have course, been worked out. Right. You know, yeah. so I, I could not yeah. grab your iPad and your Apple Pen <laughs> <laughs> just because I have those devices <laughs> right. in my hand. It truly is. You have to have that art and mm. the skill, obviously, and then you use the technology yeah. to assist that. Yeah, that's, that's very neat. cool. I, uh, yeah. I'm I'm really excited about what you're doing, oh, and thank, thank you. you for sharing thank it. You for uh, the it's a ministry. It is. A ministry yeah, of words, if yes, you will. Yes, absolutely. And, and we're going to segue from words to flowers. Yes, <laughs> yeah. from painting because. them to creating with them. <laughs> yeah, uh, also. We've got a, a gentleman here with us, uh, Thad we, Mosley. We've got Thad Mosley, uh, uh -huh. who uh, creates uh, his own art, a very unique art. And Thad, uh, you uh, practice your uh, art with flowers. Mm -hmm. And what better way to show art than through God's own creations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm really anxious to hear what uh, what you have to say in terms of how you got started with this and, and everything that you're doing currently with Many it. people don't realize it, but they've already seen his flowers <laughs> um, <laughs> because they're featured at the Loma Linda University Church uh -huh. oh, wow. every Sabbath. That is correct. So anyone that watches those church services is mm. or partaking been. of your art without even knowing. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yes. Why don't you tell us yeah. about how you got started? What, what was your what was your original life plan to do? And and, <laughs> and I, I from my, what I understand, it's you went on it, started on one journey and ended up uh, on this one. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. I often joke that I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up, <laughs> but I, I believe that God has led me to what I passionately love to do, and it's a, it truly is a great honor to be here with Karen today. I was telling her uh, before we began this segment that I have three or four calligraphy sets, so I understand <laughs> as an artist what it takes to really get involved. Many people would be surprised at the journey that I've had. I was a professional mm -hmm. cake decorator at one time, wow. and I drove my mother nuts because I also was self-taught. And in a Wilton decorating book, it said to turn the pans over in the kitchen instead of baking a cake and gaining 50 pounds and decorate them. Well, I was using Crisco and powdered sugar, and I would pull every pan, and then I didn't want to wash them. <laughs> so you so, learned by decorating pans. <laughs> I did. And later, my... I, I was in love with my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Weber, <laughs> and she, I, I proposed to her at oh. four and said, you have to marry me, <laughs> Mrs. Weber. And she said, aren't you sweet? Here's a plant. Take it home and, and grow this plant. And that was probably the seed that grew my love of flowers. I cared mm -hmm. for that plant 
And I, as she predicted, I moved on to the next grade. She said, you'll forget all about me. <laughs> but by the time I reached La Sierra College, I had 30 or 40 plants. And my roommate said, if you get another one, you're out of the room. <laughs> I tried to hide one. I was out of the room because I chose the flowers and plants over my roommates. So I ended up thinking I'd be in ministry. Mm. And then I decided in college I would go into special ed and started off in speech pathology with a special ed emphasis. And along the way, I started volunteering at a flower shop. Uh, later, I was working in the library at La Sierra University. I came over to Loma Linda, and I was quite honored uh, before the internet. I'm dating myself. I always tell people <laughs> I had a pet dinosaur <laughs> you know, named Dino. And uh, the baby Faye heart operation came along. So oh, yes. I would pull the protocol. We didn't have cell phones. <laughs> and we didn't have the internet. And so you would photocopy them in her library alone. And I physically would run from a branch library in the dental school up to the med center and take Dr. Longo and Dr. Bailey's names that we're familiar with, associated with that first transplant, written material four or five times a day, as fast as I could. And I was buying my secretaries flowers, two or three hundred dollars. People thought it was out of my budget for the office, but I was paying out of my pocket for the long hours we put in, and I thought, this is really expensive. I better start <laughs> volunteering at this flower shop. <laughs> The first shop that I volunteered at said, you will never master this. <laughs> really? And I'm not a competitive person, but when someone tells me never, right. <laughs> I thought, so I went to my neighbors, can I cut your flowers? I'll give them to you when I'm done with them. And I practiced and practiced like Karen. I was self-taught at that level because I wasn't learning in the shop. Uh, it turned out to be a meditation with God. Mm -hmm. It really did because mm -hmm. I felt like I was working with his handiwork and creation mm -hmm. and it was my moment of peace in the busy week. Yes. And so I kept working with it and working with it and then third or fourth career change, I called my mom and I said, I'm going to be a florist. <laughs> and she said, I know. And I thought, <laughs> what do you mean you know? And she said, well, when you were a little boy, you would go into the church and there was a lady named Maggie Smith that would just cut flowers from her garden and put in front of the podium uh, where the minister would be preaching. She said, and your eyes would get big as saucers and you go, she has the best job in the world. She gets to put flowers in God's house. <laughs> oh, and she said, so from beautiful. that moment, I knew you were gonna be a florist. Well, I paid my way when you could through college. I was working at uh, La Sierra and Versatron Industries and then later in the library. I said, Mom, couldn't you just have told me? I could have saved a lot of money. <laughs> and in motherly Tension wisdom, up, doesn't it? she yeah. said, would you have listened to me? And I said, well, no. And she said, I knew you had to find your way. Well, fast forward, I started volunteering at a shop. Then I went back to study design. Most people think that it's just a gift. And I went back to study design. And when I opened the store, I made a commitment to God that I would never open on Sabbath. I would do weddings, I would do funerals, but I would never sell for profit uh, on Sabbath myself. And so the first hurdle came along. It was going to be Valentine's Day. And so that is the time when a lot of shops use the money to carry them throughout the year. And I told the other area florists, I'm going to close. And they thought, you are an mm. idiot. That mm. Mm. year before, I told my customers, we're going to be closed. So if you're sending your spouse, girlfriend, whoever, flowers, you need to get them during the week because I'm going to honor Sabbath and be closed. We got all of our orders out. And that Sabbath came here in Loma Linda. And it rained horses and cows. The water came up wow. over the curds. And I felt sorry for my fellow florists. I wasn't gloating at it. But a lot of them suffered as if mm. the flood had happened again. Uh, they had product that couldn't sell. No one was coming out. And, but to, that sounds like I was a really good person. I did take a wedding for someone. They said, well, I'll do a wedding because it's a holy matrimony. And so the staff was excited because they were going to be off. Instead, we were huddled inside <laughs> doing flowers for the wedding, for which they were grateful because no one would take their wedding. 
I have learned to incorporate many things from, uh, I teach a class once a year up at the School of Health and Display and Marketing. And classes that children think that they won't be interested in, like geometry, dealing with the different planes, mm. uh, have contributed. I think one of the unique things that I bring, bring to floral design is that I like for each flower to individually tell a story. And on Friday nights, after mm -hmm. sunset, when I'm completed with my other work to hospitals or homes or offices, I stop and I pray and I ask that God will bless the flowers. And that surprisingly has brought me full circle back to ministry. I am shocked at the letters from all over the world because Loma Linda broadcasts uh, the service that come in saying, you incorporated a flower that my mother loved and it brought me back to a piece of scripture. Karen here brought in my, my mother's favorite text was oh, wow. they that fly on wings of eagle. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just mm -hmm. seeing that interconnectedness because mm -hmm. I would pray and say, let the flowers just bless someone. And invariably yes. someone comes up and says, my favorite flower takes me back to cradle roll or Sabbath school. And we actually grew carnations or we took care of these type of plants. And my inspiration there is that God said for the artists to bring their best talents to mm -hmm. the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Some people will say, oh, you're wasting money and you're wasting flowers. And I thought, this is the passion that God has given mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And we think that it was just the artisans of fine art, like gold and everything else, but everyone represented uh, their passion for giving glory to God. They brought pigeons or whatever. The poor people that we don't hear about also brought something. And so it's my time too. And the, I say now that I don't do a walk-in store, it's that time where I can turn off the cell phone, I put on religious music, and I commune with God as I do the flowers and think, what a wonderful thing you've given me to work with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you're basically it's celebrating beautiful. his creation. Yes, it's yeah. a joy. You know, it's a bouquet of, of, of yes. something that God created. Yeah. Right. Uh, Unfortunately, we can't uh, on a broadcast uh, get the scent. Uh, the viewers <laughs> at so home, beautiful. But we're enjoying that the yeah. visual and the uh, uh, the the, uh, the scent of it is just uh, incredible and and beautiful. Thad, just really am amazed. It, it, and you see things. I know when you brought this in, uh, you immediately looked at it and said, "Oh, well, there." And, and he just started. Rich putting Fussing things in different it. places, which the untrained eye, as as mine is, <laughs> would not even see those things. And you just immediately went, and uh, it, it just uh, is a real work of art. It truly is. But what is the biggest challenge that you you have as a? I don't know if you call yourself a floral arranger or a designer. or what floral designer. Floral designer. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Um, is that there is a a thought, especially with the internet of do it yourself. And I never challenge that. I tell people I'm not in competition with those that choose to do the flowers. I really love that everyone is involved in them. And I thought as a man, I thought I was going into a predominantly female industry, but it's like chefs. We, you know, we see our moms cooking most of the time. Dads are the barbecuers of soy meat and, and things. <laughs> and so we don't really realize that both genders are really involved in the mm. industry. So I was thinking, I'm changing into something that's not gonna be considered very cool among men, and I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to think about this. And one of my first invitations to share my craft or uh, professional training was with a group called Pathfinders, which most people in the Adventist church will know, similar to a combination between Boy Scouts mm -hmm. and Girl Scouts. And so I did all of my design work and the boys were the first ones to come up and go, wow, what you do is really cool. And I thought, really? <laughs> was that thought? That's, neat. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, one of the other challenges is that too often florists are considered, uh, and I'm honored to be considered more a friend than a profession. And so I get calls all the time. Well, how do I do this? How do I do, you know, make an arrangement like this? And some of the knowledge I don't mind sharing and most of the knowledge I don't mind sharing, but I had to use the illustration of, uh, for a person that eats meat, of going to a famous restaurant like Lowry's and saying, 
I really like the ambiance here, but I don't want to pay your prices. And I found <laughs> this steak at the corner market on sale. Yes. And I love the way you season it and cook. So if you'll just let me sit at your table and you will cook this for me, I'd really appreciate it. And so, you know, I, I said there are a number of things. I tell people there was an incredible story of a man that made his wife's wedding dress because he had worked in the industry. He baked the cake. He did all of the food for their wedding, and I thought, and he slept for a week after the wedding. So I say, choose your moments carefully. If you're having a wedding, you don't want to also do your flowers. You don't want your fa <laughs> family to do them or to cook all the food. You should, at that time, is to bring in the professional and enjoy holy matrimony <laughs> and the gift that God is giving you. That, if, if people wanted to... Uh, find out about where to get your beautiful designs and yes. creations. How can they find you and get get a hold of you to... Uh, if it's okay to give my number, <laughs> you well, can always re reach me through the university church. Uh, they share my number with my permission freely. That's it's, the Loma Linda University Church. Uh, Seventh-day Adventist in mm -hmm. Loma Linda. My number is 909-799-1185. And you can also text that. Uh, I had a walk-in store, and it was very small, smaller than this set, and I produced all of that work out of there. But now I produce from a studio in my home where I don't have people come. And so you can call or text. I'll get back in touch with you. And I don't do traditional design in that I don't like to recreate from pictures. I mentioned I like for everything to have its own unique gift. And so I talk to you, even in my wedding consultations, about what your concept is, what you're trying to achieve, and then I design according to that, and everyone is a unique tribute to a gift in the hospital or mm -hmm. uh, engagement or anything else. I try to bring your, your desires into that arrangement with mm -hmm. God's blessings. That's wonderful, and, and we're really blessed by having you here today, and uh, Rich, I just feel yeah. uh, richer here today as a result of meeting Karen and Absolutely. Pat and seeing their art, the, their commitment to it, and uh, we really appreciate uh, both of you being here very much. So you, you're thank helping you to the bring honor. good to life. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. helping to that's right to um, enhance uh, the beauty, the, the simple beauties of the world around mm. us. Mm -hmm. Very and, much uh, so. Greg, we have about a minute left. Um, and so I'm just wondering if any closing remarks or comments that we want to make kind of to wrap this up. Uh, well, again, we just, uh, you know, it's such an inspiration to me and I hope to our viewers as well that they are able to be inspired, as the name of our program is, mm -hmm. uh, by seeing the vast diversity of art that can be created to honor our Savior. Uh, that to me is the most fascinating. We tend to think of just music and you know paintings maybe, but there's so much more to art than just the, those things that we more commonly see as we've witnessed today. Mm -hmm. It's just been a real, real uh, blessing uh, for me and we hope to our viewers that you've been inspired by it as well. And we wanna thank uh, each of you for tuning in to our broadcast. Uh, please see our website at visitinspire.org. Lots of information about these artists and many others there. Have a good day.